Hello everybody. Welcome to part two of VBA programming for Excel 2010. In this section we're going to be discussing working with modules, procedures, and functions. And so let's go on and, and get started. Welcome to again part two. This is section one of part two. So I'm going to go to file new, open up a brand new workbook. And in this blank workbook what I'm going to do is discuss modules. So when we're when we are working with macros and as you as you learn in the first section when you do record macro you can write a macro name I'm gonna call this macro one I'm gonna go on and select OK and I'm just gonna do a very simple macro I'm gonna color this column yellow and then I'm going to hit stop recording I'm gonna record another macro I'll call this type letters in column C. I'm going to hit OK and I'm going to just type a few letters here and then start recording and I'm just going to record one more macro and let's I'll name this macro I'm going to hit record macro I'm going to call this fill letter fill column D and with column D I'm just going to fill that with highlight it black and then developers tab hit start recording so now I just recorded three macros I did that rather quickly fill column D macro one and type letters in column C and what I'm gonna do is go to my developers tab and click visual basic and I'm gonna show you what this has done to our workbook in the workbook we now have a module one and module one you're gonna see the macros that were created while we were recording the macros now the reason why I wanted to bring this up is because as you continue to use your workbook and as you continue to use more macros you may notice that more modules start to appear in your project environment and that's perfectly fine you can have multiple modules or you can have just one module it really doesn't matter but for this what you what you do want to set up is an organized way for you to get to your code so if you have a lot of macros that are involving just sheet one, just as an example, what you can do is rename that module by selecting the module. You, you should have a properties window right here. If not, go to view and select properties window. But we can change this and we can call this sheet one macros. And then what we can do later on is if we were to toggle back to our workbook, if we were to record another macro, and let's just call this just another macro and hit OK. I'm going to type in a few letters into column G, um, G and then hit stop recording. I'm going to go back to my Visual Basic environment and if I double click the sheet one macros we'll see that just another macro was created right here the one that we just established and what we can do is we can go to the top left hand corner and select module and let's just say that this module is really for sheet 2 we can name this module sheet 2 macros I'm gonna hit enter all that's gonna do is just change the name but I'm gonna toggle back to the other module sheet 1 macros and I'm gonna copy the just another macro just another macro procedure I'm actually gonna cut it using control X that way I can take it out of here double -click, double click sheet to macros and then paste it that way if I I'll have my code organize the macros that way when I come back later to either edit the procedure or the or the macro code I'll have it well organized where I have macros for sheet 1 and macros for sheet 2 and so if I go to my macros again but from the Microsoft Excel portion of the application we can see that just another macro is still here it's just in a different module this is going to be a good practice for getting used to working with different modules this is not a requirement I mean, by all means you can have multiple modules this is just for the sake of, of being organized having more structure in, in your coding because as we progress into these tutorials macros will get more complicated and more complex it's a good practice again to keep these macros organized 
That way you'll be able to better understand your procedures and functions. 